Hi, I'm here today with Adahan Bozda. Thank you for being on the show, Adahan. Thank you for inviting me. Adahan is a fellow forensicator and cybersecurity expert. He works within the healthcare sector and uh, works internally to an organization, doing some of the things I do as expert witness outside an organization. And today we're going to be talking about Windows 7, the end of the life cycle of Windows 7, and some of the cybersecurity issues relating to organizations that are on Windows 7 and are trying to prevent future data breaches. So, Adahan, could you tell everyone a little bit about what Microsoft uh, did recently as it relates to Windows 7? Well, as you said, Windows 7 end of life uh, cycle happened. Uh, it's in January 14, 2020. They stopped patching Windows 7 environment. So, it is vulnerable to any attack after uh, the date at January 14, 2020. So now when people uh, report their uh, CVEs detailing vulnerabilities in Windows 7, eventually they're up there for the hacker world to see it is. and to, it is. to exploit because Microsoft's not patching that operation. Very true. It's a uh, you know, uh, dream come true for the hackers. Yeah, well, no more t data patches means what exactly? It means that you are more vulnerable to attacks. And so every day, the risk of cyber compromise only grows for organizations still on Windows 7. Very true. So uh, what is, uh, for the, the non-technical person out there, could you explain what this is analogous to? Well, I can give you the house analogy. You buy a house and you don't do any upgrades, you don't do any maintenance, something is going to break. So this is what's going to happen with Windows 7. Because there's no more patch, there's no more updates, there's no more security involved in it. At one point, if you still continue using it, mm -hmm. you will get breached. So it's kind of like your locks start to fall off the door at exactly. the time. Exactly. And if you consider the contents of a healthcare provider uh, to have sensitive data like patient medical records, electronic medical records, uh, yeah. protected healthcare information, mm -hmm. or uh, PII, all of that stuff. Uh, is vulnerable to exfiltration. There, yes. So why are people still using Windows 7 given this, this threat? Well, uh, some applications uh, are not upgraded uh, to work with Windows 10 and one element. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, a lot of people working in the corporate environment are resistant to change mm -hmm. because of uh, the applications are not working with Windows 10. So, those or they just like the, the cleanness of Windows 7 relative to Windows 10, which yes. and you know, has a lot of bloatware loaded on it if you're getting the version True. off the shelf. True. You True. Know, who really needs to have all these games on their exactly. environment? But at the same time, uh, every healthcare company that, you know, even my company that I'm working for, we have a golden image that we create, which are stripped down mm -hmm. from all those games and stuff like that. So we don't use those, mm -hmm. but uh, to get to there, mm -hmm. there's always an image needs to be updated in Windows 10. So what are some of the, the potential problems for the organization that stays on Windows 7 and just doesn't get with the program to migrate off? Well, first thing is, you know, APT. What's the APT? APT is Advanced Persistent Threat. Well, that, that's um, like that nation state. Uh, big Brother lurking yep. on the chips of the computer device, yep. waiting for a moment to attack, right? They can infiltrate you, they can do nothing, just sit and wait and look at your data. And we've seen that in many uh, breaches. The time that you found out that you know the company was breached, they've been in the system for more than six, seven months. So they were collecting data slowly by slowly, and at one point, they turn the engine on, and then some of the doomsday attack starts. Suddenly you start losing data, deletion happens, and then they grab everything out of from your system. So there have been a lot of nation states making threats. Oh, there must so. be a huge opportunity so. yeah. for certain nation states to get themselves onto hospital systems and maybe yeah. wait until the opportune time to strike is such that it could magnify the damage. Exactly. If we had a power outage yes. and they were to strike at that time, that would yep. probably magnify the damage significantly. Very, very much. And now you've been talking about those in your other uh, 
videos about these kind of things. Cyber realm is another way of attacking our national interests. Healthcare is one of them. So, what, so let's assume that an APT uh, gets into a healthcare environment, healthcare providers' uh, systems, mm -hmm. and they're able to access electronic medical records, EMR, patient yeah. health care yeah. information, uh, what might they want to do with that information? Well, patient records, especially the names, social security numbers, uh, medical records, everything is sellable in the dark web. And it's worth a lot more than just having it social security. It is. True. It's like, you know, a single record may call for $35 if you you know, uh, got about 10,000 records, 10,000 records times by $35. And so, and so likewise, if that data exfiltrates and it gets out there in the market, the healthcare providers are looking at potentially significant financial damages as yeah. well as reputational yes. damage. Yes, because uh, when these things happen, suddenly you have to report this either to the government or to the media and you know, the, then afterwards, the penalties will come in. Yeah. And investigations cost a lot of money. Uh, penalties are really severe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing all of these things, and if you're still in the Windows 7 environment, you're actually opening yourself to these kind of attacks. Yeah, so when these data incidents happen, as you like to call them, mm -hmm. um, where do you see the role of internal IT investigations versus an outside computer forensic firm like myself mm -hmm. that specializes in data breaches and EMR. Yeah. What is the, the typical role and function of the internal versus the outside expert witness? In general, it's you know like myself, we do the investigation internally, but we would love to hire, I mean, we would like to hire an outside uh, investigation to give an unbiased information, mm -hmm. you know, saying that if we go to, you know, the legal uh, ways, then you will be able to say that, hey, I'm not involved with this no. company, I'm doing this. Uh, uh, and sometimes there's benefit to having an outside forensic expert that's independent speak only to the issues that are relevant yeah. and not necessarily ha having knowledge of who was an IT that got fired or any of that other stuff exactly. that isn't really relevant exactly. to the investigation yes. but could create risk for the healthcare yes. provider. Sure. Sure. Uh, so what with regard to reporting out obligations, let's say let's say you find that there was indeed exfiltration of patient data and, mm -hmm. and that information left the organization, what are the reporting obligations? Well uh, the best way that I can tell right now is if you visit the hhs.gov or consult your attorney, it will actually tell you, uh, especially the website, will tell you what are the reporting obligations. There are multiple levels. If I go into detail over here, it's not going to last. Got it. And, and so we talked about exfiltration, but what could happen if someone gets in and actually deletes patient medical records? Well, the first thing is, in the hospital systems, that patient who's going to be either going into a surgery or something like that, they will not be able to, you know, get pull out the data. And so people who have a need for critical life-saving oh. care might actually die. That, yes. Or worse yet, if someone were to alter the medical records. That is a... And, and say, it's, instead of your left lung having cancer, it's your right lung. <laughs> yep. And you get the, the wrong lung removed. That's a, a real problem. It is a big problem. So if you had to say, wrapping up, what would be the top three recommendations you make to healthcare organizations to help defend against the potential future data breaches from running Windows 7? So, first is implement an upgrade plan to leave Windows 7 immediately. That's a given fact. Second, Isolate Windows 7 uh, legacy into VDIs, which we call the virtual uh, desktop environments. Isolate them from the network. And the third, make sure that your disaster recovery is in place and you do periodic tabletop exercises. Well, thanks so much. That was really informative. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me again. Take care.